see. Okay. Ship in a bottle. Hmm. This one looks pretty cool. Whoa. Man, that is awesome. Hang on a second. Let's see. Oh, this one looks neat. That one's really big inside there. That's got a lot of sails. Hmm. I wonder how they get it in there. Let's see. Let's see. How to build a ship in a bottle. Wow, this guy's good. Dan Berg. Hmm. There's got to be some kind of geometry in here. With, given the size of the ship. It's like scale and proportion. So interesting. I bet I could do this. Okay, let me see. Cool. I found this in my old Christmas presents from like four or five years ago. The Secret Reveal Boat in a Bottle Kit. It even says I can do it. Let's see what's inside. Wow. Look at this. That is so cool. I'm going to put a boat inside this bottle. <laughs> it, e it even comes with a cork. Wow. Hmm. Tweezers. Got to be able to put those pieces inside the bottle. Whoa. Look at these sails. Look at the size of that sail. That's like a similar polygon. Cool. Man, here's the little boat. Here's the hull. Do, do, do. Wow. That is really cool. Oh. Here are the instructions. Shh, don't tell. It's a secret. Hmm. This looks pretty easy. I bet I could do this. All right. Well, I'm going to try to do this. You guys, go ahead and watch this video, and let's learn about similar polygons so we can figure out what the scale factor of this is. All right, guys, welcome back. In your intro, you, t you saw that we were talking about ships in a bottle. Well, ships in a bottle are really just having to do with similar polygons, especially the sails. Because what we're talking about is taking something that's normally really big and making it a little bit smaller, but it still has the same proportions. So the size of the sails relative to the actual boat part is still the same as if it were a big ship. Okay? And so we're going to talk about similarity today. And... What we need to remember about things that are similar is that the symbol for similar is the tilde, okay, the little squiggly line which we normally put above the congruence sign. Okay? And so if we look in one and two, similar means Same shape. But different size. Okay, so same shape, but different size. Okay? Now, one and two are the same shape. You notice the triangle, it looks the same. So what we would say is, triangle one is similar to triangle two. Or we could write this triangle one similar to that's the tilde that we were talking about triangle two okay they're similar because they're the same size or they're the same shape but not necessarily the same size if we look at three and four they're different shapes still both triangles but they're different shapes three is more like a right triangle four is kind of looking like an isosceles okay so we'd say triangle one is not similar. 
or triangle four is not similar to triangle three. Okay, and so we could abbreviate this triangle three not similar to triangle four. Okay, we put the little slash through the tilde to say that they're not similar. Okay, so if we scroll down a little bit, we've got a definition for similar polygons. Two polygons are similar polygons if and only if their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding side lengths are proportional. So if we look at these two shapes here, they look to be relatively the same shape. But when we test it, when we actually look at it, we notice that A is 90 and E is 90. So angle E or angle A is congruent to angle E. Okay. And angle B is congruent to angle F. Angle C is congruent to angle G. And angle D is congruent to angle H. So, four congruent angles. That's key for similar polygons. You have to have congruent angles. But then the sides is a little bit different scenario. With the sides, they don't necessarily have to be congruent, but they have to be proportional. So, angles congruent. Corresponding side lengths are proportional. Okay, so if we put A, D over E, H, we want to test to see if that's equal to A, B over E, F. And we want to see if that's equal to, whoops, A, B over E, F. Is that equal to B, C over F, G? And is that equal to, is that equal to CD over GH? Notice, I kind of went around the polygon in, you know, a, a, a good fashion here. And when we test this, we see that all of them are equal to 1 half. So 5 over 10 is 1 half. 6 over 12 is 1 half. 5.4 over 10.8 is 1 half. 4 over 8 is 1 half. So, two conditions. One, congruent angles. Congruent angles is what I meant to say. And the second thing is proportional sides. Okay, those are the two conditions for similarity. So when we go down here to example one, we're going to be describing similar polygons. Identify the pair of congruent angles and corresponding sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe these using what I know. Okay, so if we look at what's going on here, angle Z is congruent to angle R. Also, angle Y is congruent to angle Q. And so we have the third angles theorem in play here and we can say that angle X is congruent to angle S because remember if we have two angles that are congruent in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another triangle then the third angles must be congruent because they all add up to 180. So we have the three angles congruent. Three congruent angles. The second part is to test the ratio of the sides. And so if I put XY and XY goes with SQ, XY over SQ is equal to 6 over 13.5. And so what I'm going to do is, oops, sorry, I got confused. I think I wrote it down wrong in my notes. That would actually be 6 over 9. Got you there. Okay. Then, this is the one with 2 to the one with none. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to say XZ 
should go over SR. And that is going to be equal to 9 over 13.5. And the third set of uh, sides that I'm going to test is going to be YZ over QR. Okay? And that's going to be 12 over 18. When I reduce these fractions, I should get the same number if they're similar. So the three angles are already congruent. And so we're going to test these sides. Well, this gives me two-thirds. And this gives me two-thirds. Those are the easy ones to reduce. When I end up looking, you know, and figuring this out, you can put it into your calculator, divide 9 by 13.5. You end up with two-thirds also. So what this means is we have proportional sides. because all the ratios of the side lengths is the same. So our two conditions are met. And so what we have is we have congruent, congruent angles, proportional sides. So we have similar triangles here, okay? So in the second example here, I want you to try this one, okay? So what I want you to do is identify the pairs of congruent angles and corresponding sides. So do exactly like I did up there, all right? So you can go ahead and pause and do that one. We'll talk about it in class. When we move on down here, we're going to talk about the similarity ratio. When we talk about similarity ratio, it's the ratio of the lengths of the sides, okay, of two similar polygons. Okay, so it's a ratio of the lengths of the sides of two similar polygons. Okay, so the similarity ratio for triangle ABC to triangle DEF is, and we'd have 3 to 6, which is equal to one half. Okay? If we did triangle DEF to triangle ABC, it would be six to three or two to one. Okay? So you can go either way with these, but you just need to remember that you're always using one set of sides to the other set of sides. Okay?